Carl Friedrich Gass Carl Friedrich Gauss Johann Carl Friedrich Gauss was a German mathematician and physicist who made significant contributions to many fields in mathematics and science. Sometimes referred to as the and the greatest mathematician since antiquity, Gauss had an exceptional influence in many fields of mathematics and science. He is ranked among history's most influential mathematicians. Also available at Retrieve 23 February 2014. Comprehensive biographical article. He was a child prodigy in mathematics and completed his magnum opus, Disquisitions Arithmetici, at age 21. Gauss attended Collegium Carolinum and the University of Göttingen, where he made several mathematical discoveries. In 1807, he became the director of the Astronomical Observatory at the University of Göttingen, where he was active in mathematical research. Gauss died of a heart attack on February 23, 1855, in Göttingen. He had two wives and six children. He had conflicts with his sons over their career choices, as he did not want them to enter mathematics or science, fearing they would not surpass his achievements. Despite being a hard worker, he was not a prolific writer and refused to publish incomplete work. Gauss was known to dislike teaching, but some of his students became influential mathematicians. He supported monarchy and opposed the Pauline. Gauss believed that the act of learning, not possession of knowledge, granted the greatest enjoyment. Gauss proved the fundamental theorem of algebra which states that every non-constant single variable polynomial with complex coefficients has at least one complex root. He made important contributions to number theory and developed the theories of binary and ternary quadratic forms. Gauss is also credited with inventing the fast Fourier transform algorithm and was instrumental in the discovery of the dwarf planet series. His work on the motion of planetoids disturbed by large planets led to the introduction of the Gaussian gravitational constant and the method of least squares, which is still used in all sciences to minimize measurement error. Furthermore, Gauss invented the heliotrope. In 1821, magnetometer in 1833, and alongside Wilhelm Eduard Weber, invented the first electromagnetic telegraph in 1833. Family, Youth and Education Johann Karl Friedrich Gauss was born on 30 April 1777 in Brunswick, in the Duchy of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel, to a family of lower social status. Rudolf Borch, Anante von des Mathematikers Karl Friedrich Gauss genealogical table. Anante von Brun to Deutsche Wahl. 1 pp. 63 minus 65. Central Stelle für Deutsch person and unfamily in Geschichte his father Gerhard Dietrich Gauss worked in several jobs as butcher, bricklayer, gardener, and in addition as treasurer of a death benefit fund. Gauss characterized his father as an honorable and respected man, but rough and dominating at home. He was experienced in writing and calculating, but his wife Dorothy, Carl Friedrich's mother, was nearly illiterate. He was christened and confirmed in a church near the school he attended as a child. He had one elder brother from his father's first marriage. Gauss was a child prodigy in the field of mathematics. When the elementary teachers noticed his intellectual abilities, they provided the attention of the Duke of Brunswick, who sent him to the Collegium Carolinum in Brunswick, which he attended from 1792 to 1795 with Everhard August Wilhelm von Zimmermann as one of his teachers. Thereafter, the Duke granted him the resources for studies at the Hanoverian University of Göttingen until 1798, where he studied mathematics, sciences and classical languages as well. One of his professors in mathematics was Abraham Gottlob Kessner, whom Gauss called the leading mathematician among poets, and the leading poet among mathematicians because of his writing epigrams, Gauss depicted him by a drawing showing a lecture scene, when he produced errors in most simple calculations. Astronomy was taught by Carl Felix von Seifer, with whom Gauss stayed in correspondence after graduation. Albers and Gauss mocked him in their correspondence. In contrast to them, Gauss thought highly of George Christoph Lichtenberg, his teacher of physics, and of Christian Gottlob Hain, whose lecture in classics Gauss attended with pleasure. Though being a registered student at university, it is obvious that he was a self-taught student in mathematics when he independently rediscovered several important theorems. He succeeded with a breakthrough in a geometrical problem that had occupied mathematicians since the days of the ancient Greeks, when he showed in 1796 that a regular polygon can be constructed by compass and straight edge. This discovery was subject of his first publication and ultimately led Gauss to choose mathematics instead of philology as a career. Gauss' mathematical diary shows that, in the same year, he was very productive in number theory, too. 
He discovered a construction of a heptid kagan, advanced modular arithmetic, found the first proof of the quadratic reciprocity law, and dealt with the prime number theorem. Thus from that time he got many ideas for his mathematical opus magnum disquisitions Arithmetici, published in 1801. Private Scholar Gauss graduated as Ph.D. in 1799, not in Göttingen as sometimes mentioned, but on the Duke's special request at the University of Helmstedt, the only state university of the duchy. The Johann Friedrich Pfaff assessed the doctoral thesis, and Gauss got the degree in absentee without further oral examination as usually requested. The next year the Duke granted his cost of living as a private scholar in Brunswick. He showed his gratitude and loyalty to the Duke when he refused several calls from the Russian Academy of Science in St. Petersburg and the Langer University. The Duke of Brunswick had promised him the foundation of an observatory in Brunswick in 1804, and architect Peter. Joseph got made preliminary designs, but one of Napoleon's wars cancelled those plans. The Duke was mortally wounded in the Battle of Battle of Jena in 1806. The duchy was abolished in the following year, and Gauss' financial support stopped. Thus he followed a call to the University of Göttingen, then an institution of the newly founded Kingdom of Westphalia under Jerome Bonaparte, as full professor and director of the Astronomical Observatory. When Gauss studied the determination of asteroid orbits, he established contact with the astronomical community of Bremen and Lilienthal, especially Wilhelm Obers, Karl Ludwig Harding and Friedrich Wilhelm Bessel with regards to an informal society there named Celestial Police, one of their aims with the discovery of further planets, and they assembled data of asteroids and comets as basic fund for Gauss calculations. Thereby Gauss developed new powerful methods for the determination of orbits, later published in his astronomical opus magnum theory and motus corporum celestium. Professor in Göttingen Gauss arrived at Göttingen in November 1807, and in the following years he was confronted with a demand for 2,000 francs from the Westphalian government as war contribution. Without having yet received his salary, he could not raise this enormous amount. Both Albers and Laplace wanted to help him with payment, but Gauss refused it. Finally, an anonymous person of Frankfurt, later discovered to be the Prince Primate Dalberg. Well, uh, Gauss took on the directory to the 60 years old observatory founded in 1748 by George Roman II and built on a converted fortification tower with usable, but partly out of date instruments. Harding, who had been extraordinary professor for astronomy since 1805 as safest successor, cared for the instruments and gave most of the lessons in astronomy, a task that Gauss always detested. The construction of a new observatory had been approved by George Roman III in principle since 1802 and the Westphalian government continued the planning, but the building was not finished until October 1816 with new competitive instruments, for instance two meridian circles from Ripsold and Rheinbar, and a helometer from Fraunhofer. With Alexander von Humboldt's visit in Göttingen in 1826, both scholars started a productive cooperation. The two scientists built magnetic observatories in Göttingen and Berlin, respectively, and researched on the field of geomagnetism. In 1828, Gauss was Humboldt's personal guest when he attended a conference of the Society of German Natural Scientists and Physicians in Berlin. On this occasion, he became acquainted with Wilhelm Weber, Gauss' support and collaborator in physics. In 1810, Gauss got the opportunity to move to Berlin as full member of the Prussian Academy of Science, with great liberty of research in mathematics, but no obligation to give lectures. Gauss refused, possibly because of his difficult family conditions. In the 1820s another call came from Berlin, but Gauss refused once more, and the bike could improve his material situation. Gauss remained mentally active into his old age, even while suffering from gout and general unhappiness. His last observation was the solar eclipse of July 28, 1851. At the age of 62, he taught himself Russian. On 23 February 1855, Gauss died of a heart attack in Göttingen. He is interred in the Obonu Cemetery there. Heinrich Juhl, Gauss' son-in-law, and Wolfgang Sartorius von Walterschossen, Gauss' close friend and biographer, gave eulogies at his funeral. Gauss' brain The day after Gauss' death, his brain was removed, preserved and studied by Rudolf Wagner, who found its mass to be slightly above average at. The cerebral area was determined by Wagner's son Hermann and his doctoral thesis to be. Highly developed convolutions were also found, which in the early 20th century were suggested as the explanation for his genius. After various previous investigations, a magnetic resonance study of 1998 done at the Max Planck Institute for Biophysical Chemistry in Göttingen gave no results which could be used to explain his mathematical abilities. In 2013, a neurobiologist at the same institute discovered that Gauss' brain had 
been mixed up by reason of wrong labelling with that of the physician Konrad Heimrich Futz, who died in Göttingen in the same year as Gauss. A further investigation showed no remarkable anomalies in the brains of either person. Thus all investigations on Gauss' brain until 1998, except the first ones of Rudolf and Hermann Wagner, actually referred to the brain of Futz. Religious views Gauss was nominally a member of the St. Albans Parish of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Göttingen. G. Walter Dunnington describes Gauss' religious views as follows. Apart from his correspondence, not many details are known about Gauss' personal creed. Many biographers of Gauss disagree about his religious stance, with Buchler and others considering him a deist with very unorthodox views, while Dunnington points out that he was, at least, a nominal Lutheran. In connection to this, there is a record of a conversation between Rudolf Wagner and Gauss, in which they discussed William Muir's book of the plurality of worlds. In this work, Muir had discarded the possibility of existing life in other planets on the basis of theological arguments, but this was a position with which both Wagner and Gauss disagreed. Later Wagner explained that he did not fully believe in the Bible, though he confessed that he envied those who were able to easily believe. This later led them to discuss the topic of faith, and in some other religious remarks, Gauss said that he had been more influenced by theologians like Luther and minister Paul Gerhardt than by Moses. Other religious influences included Wilhelm Brauer, Johann Peter Sussmulch, and the New Testament. Two religious works which Gauss read frequently were Brauer's Silenlea and Sussmulch's Göttlich Ordnung, 1756. He also devoted considerable time to the New Testament in the original Greek. Dunnington further elaborates on Gauss' religious views by writing, Gauss believed in an omniscient source of creation, however, he claimed that belief or a lack of it did not affect his mathematics. Though he was not a churchgoer, Gauss strongly upheld religious tolerance, believing that one is not justified in disturbing another's religious belief, in which they find consolation for earthly sorrows in time of trouble. When his son Eugene announced that he wanted to become a Christian missionary, Gauss approved of this saying that regardless of the problems within religious organizations, missionary work was a highly honorable task. Family On 9 October 1805, Gauss married Johanna Ossoff and had two sons and a daughter with her, Joseph, Wilhelmina and Louis. Johanna died on 11 October 1809, one month after Louis' birth, who himself died a few months later. Gauss plunged into a depression from which he never fully recovered. Soon after her death, he wrote a last letter to his dead wife in the style of an ancient threnody, the most personal document of Gauss. He then married Wilhelmine Moldeck, a friend of his first wife, on 4 August 1810, and had three more children, Eugen, Wilhelm, and Therese. Minna Gauss died on 12 September 1831 after serious illness for more than a decennium, possibly caused by tuberculosis. Then Therese took over the household and cared for Gauss for the rest of his life. His mother Dorothy Gauss lived in his house from 1817 until her death in 1839. The daughter Wilhelmina married the Orientalist Heinrich Ewald and died at the age of 42, possibly by tuberculosis. Therese married the actor Konstantin Stauffen after her father's death and died at 47, possibly by tuberculosis. Gauss was never quite the same without his first wife, and just like his father, grew to dominate his children. Gauss eventually had conflicts with his sons, because he did not want any of them to enter mathematics or science for fear of lowering the family name, as he believed none of them would surpass his own achievements. Still being a schoolboy, the eldest son Joseph helped his father as assistant during his survey campaign in summer 1821. After a short time at university, he joined the Hanoverian army in 1824 and assisted in surveying again in 1829. Later in the 1830s, he was responsible for the enlargement of the survey network to the western parts of the kingdom. But in all these years staying in a low military rank with a very small salary, he needed financial support from his father, especially since his marriage in 1840. Thus he left the service and, with the background of his geodetical qualifications, engaged as director of the Royal Hanoverian State Railways with the construction of the railway network. In 1836, Joseph Gauss had studied the railroad system in the USA for some months. Eugen shared a good measure of Gauss' talent in computation and languages, but had a vivacious and sometimes rebellious character. He wanted to study philology, whereas Gauss wanted him to become a lawyer. Having run up debts and caused a scandal in public, he suddenly left Göttingen under dramatic circumstances in September 1830 and emigrated via Bremen to the United States. After having wasted the few money he had taken for starting, his father refused further financial support. Thus he joined the army for five years, and thereafter worked for the American Fur Company in the Midwest, where he learned the Sioux language. Later, he moved to Missouri, and became a successful businessman. 
It took many years. For Eugene's success to counteract his reputation among Gauss friends and colleagues. See also the letter from Robert Gauss to Felix Klein on 3 September 1912. Willow married a niece of the astronomer Bessel and also moved to Missouri in 1837, starting as a farmer and later becoming wealthy in the shoe business in St. Louis. Eugene and William are progenitors of numerous descendants in America, but the German Gauss issue descends from Joseph as the Gauss daughters had no children. Personality Though he did take a few students, Gauss was known to dislike teaching. Several of his students became influential mathematicians, among them Richard Dedekind and Bernhard Riemann. On Gauss' recommendation, Friedrich Wilhelm Bessel was awarded an honorary doctoral degree from Göttingen University in March 1811. They had been friends since 1804. Before she died, Sophie Germain was recommended by Gauss to receive an honorary degree, but she never received it. CSP 347 in 1828, Gauss attended the Conference of the Society of German Natural Scientists and Physicians in Berlin as special guest of Alexander von Humboldt. During this occasion he became acquainted with Wilhelm Weber. Gauss was an ardent perfectionist and a hard worker. He was never a prolific writer, refusing to publish work which he did not consider complete and above criticism. This was in keeping with his personal model. His personal diary indicates that he had made several important mathematical discoveries years or decades before his contemporaries published them. Eric Temple Bell said that if Gauss had published all of his discoveries in a timely manner, he would have advanced mathematics by 50 years. Gauss usually declined to present the intuition behind his often very elegant proofs. He preferred them to appear out of thin air and erased all traces of how he discovered them. This is justified, if unsatisfactorily, by Gauss in his Disquisitions Arithmetici, where he states that all analysis must be suppressed for sake of brevity. House supported the wealth monarchy and opposed Napoleon, whom he saw as an outgrowth of revolution. House summarized his views on the pursuit of knowledge in a letter letter Gauss to Bollei from 2 September 1808 to Farkas Bollei dated 2 September 1808 as follows. Algebra in his doctoral thesis from 1799, Gauss proved the fundamental theorem of algebra which states that every non-constant single variable polynomial with complex coefficients has at least one complex root. Mathematicians including Jean Laurent d'Alembert had produced false proofs before him, and Gauss' dissertation contains a critique of d'Alembert's work. Ironically, by today's standard, Gauss saw an attempt as not acceptable, owing to the implicit use of the Jordan curve theorem. However, he subsequently produced three other proofs, the last one in 1849 being generally rigorous. His attempts clarified the concept of complex numbers considerably along the Lenny. Gauss also made important contributions to number theory with his 1801 book Disquisitions Arithmetici, which was fundamental in consolidating number theory as a discipline. Then he introduced, among other things, the triple bar symbol for congruence and used it in a clean presentation of modular arithmetic. He contained the first two proofs of the law of quadratic reciprocity that allows mathematicians to determine the solvability of any quadratic equation in modular arithmetic. He developed the theories of binary and ternary quadratic forms, stated the class number problem for them, and showed that a regular heptid kagen can be constructed with straight edge and compass. Carl Friedrich Gauss section section 365 minus 366 in Disquisitions Arithmetici Leipzig, Germany, 1801 New Haven, CT, Yale University Press, 1965. If the number of its sides is the product of distinct Fermat primes and a power of two, it appears that Gauss already knew the class number formula in 1801. Furthermore, he dealt with the prime number theorem. When he discovered in 1796 that every positive integer is representable as a sum of at most three triangular numbers, he jotted down in his diary the note. In the same year, he published a result on the number of solutions of polynomials with coefficients in finite fields, which 150 years later led to the Weyl conjectures. In addition, he proved the following conjectured theorems. Fermat polygonal number theorem for n equals 3. Fermat's last theorem for n equals 5. Descartes' rule of science. Kepler conjecture for regular arrangements. He also explained the pentagram of Merificum developed an algorithm for determining the date of Easter, invented the Kulik-Tuki FFT algorithm for calculating the discrete Fourier transforms 160 years before Kuli and Tuki. Astronomy On 1 January 1801, Italian astronomer Giuseppe Paisi discovered the dwarf planet Ceres. Paisi could track Ceres for only somewhat more than a month, 
following it for three degrees across the night sky. Then it disappeared temporarily behind the glare of the sun. Several months later, when Ceres should have reappeared, Pisces could not locate it. The mathematical tools of the time were not able to extrapolate a position from such a scant amount of data. Three degrees represent less than 1% of the total orbit. Gauss heard about the problem and tackled it. After three months of intense work, he predicted a position for Ceres in December 1801, just about a year after its first sighting, and this turned out to be accurate within a half degree when it was rediscovered by Franz Xaver von Zach on 31 December at Gotha and one day later by Heinrich Olbers and Bremen. This confirmation eventually led to the classification of Ceres as minor planet designation 1 Ceres, the first asteroid ever discovered. Gauss's method involved determining a conic section in space, given one focus and the conic's intersection with three given lines, and given the time it takes the planet to traverse the arcs determined by these lines. This problem leads to an equation of the 8th degree, of which one solution, the Earth's orbit, is known. The solution sort is then separated from the remaining six based on physical conditions. In this work, Gauss used comprehensive approximation methods which he created for that purpose. One such method was the fast Fourier transform. While this method is attributed to a 1965 paper by James Cooley and John Tukey, Gauss developed it as a trigonometric interpolation method. His paper, Theory Interpolationis Methodo Novatric Tosser, was published only posthumously in 1876 in volume 3 of his collected works, preceded by the first presentation by Joseph Fourier on the subject in 1807. Sack noted that without the intelligent work and calculations of Dr. Gauss, we might not have found Ceres again. The discovery of Ceres led Gauss to his work on a theory of the motion of planetoids disturbed by large planets, eventually. Published in 1809 as Theory Motus Corporum Celestium in Section Abysconis Solum Ambientum. In a process, he so streamlined the cumbersome mathematics of 18th century orbital prediction that his work remains a cornerstone of astronomical computation. Felix Klein, for Le Sunge Nubedein Twickeln der Mathematik M19. John Dutt. Berlin, Julius Springer Verlag, 1926. It introduced the Gaussian gravitational constant and contained an influential treatment of the method of least squares, a procedure used in all sciences to this day to minimize the impact of measurement error. The method had been published firstly by Adrien Marie Legend in 1805 and Robert Adrain wrote on it in 1808, but Gauss claimed in theory motus that he had been using it since 1794 or 1795. Oscar Shane in History of Statistics, Berlin, NG Verlag Berlin, 2012 p. 81. Then a history of statistics. This disagreement is called the priority dispute over the discovery of the method of least squares. Gauss proved the method under the assumption of normally distributed errors in his paper theory combination is observation and error orbis minimus obnoxy from 1821. Geodetic survey. In 1818 Gauss, putting his calculation skills to practical use, carried out a geodetic survey of the Kingdom of Hanover, linking up with previous Danish surveys. To aid the survey, Gauss invented the heliotrope, an instrument that uses a mirror to reflect sunlight over great distances to measure positions. In 1828, when studying differences in latitude, Gauss first defined a physical approximation for the figure of the Earth as the surface everywhere perpendicular to the direction of gravity. Later, his doctoral student Johann Benedict Listing called this the geoid. Non Euclidean geometries Gauss claimed to have discovered the possibility of non Euclidean geometries, but never published it. He is the one who coined the term non Euclidean geometry. This discovery was a major paradigm shift in mathematics, as it freed mathematicians from the mistaken belief that Euclid's axioms were the only way to make geometry consistent and non-contradictory. Research on these geometries led to, among other things, Einstein's theory of general relativity, which describes the universe as non-Euclidean. Gauss's friend Farkas Bolliai, with whom he had sworn brotherhood and the banner of truth as a student, had tried in vain for many years to prove the parallel postulate from Euclid's other axioms of geometry. Bolliai's son John has discovered non-Euclidean geometry in 1829 and published his work in 1832. After seeing it, Gauss wrote to Farkas Bolliai to praise it would amount to praising myself for the entire content of the work coincides almost exactly with my own meditations which have occupied my mind for the past 30 or 35 years. Letter from Gauss to Bolliai from 6 March 1832 This statement put a strain on his relationship with John Bolliai who thought that Gauss was stealing his idea. Letters from Gauss years before 1829 reveal him obscurely discussing the problem of parallel lines. Waddle Dunnington argues in his Gauss biography that Gauss was in fact and full position of non-Euclidean geometry long before it was published by Bolliai, but that he refused to publish any of it because of his fear of controversy. 
In 1854, Kells selected the topic for Bernhard Riemann's inaugural lecture on the hypotheses which lie at the basis of geometry. Bernhard Riemann Translated by William Kingdon Clifford on the way home from Riemann's lecture, Weber reported that Gauss was full of praise and excitement. Derima Egrichim The geodetic survey of Hanover, which required Gauss to spend summers travelling on horseback for a decade, the prince of mathematics. The door to science by Kepler's discovery, com. Fuel Gauss interest in differential geometry and topology, fields of mathematics dealing with curves and surfaces. Among other things, he came up with the notion of Gaussian curvature. This led in 1828 to an important theorem, the theorem egregium, establishing an important property of the notion of curvature. Informally, the theorem says that the curvature of a surface can be determined entirely by measuring angles and distances on the surface. That is, curvature does not depend on how the surface might be embedded in three-dimensional space or two-dimensional space. Magnetism In 1831, Gauss developed a fruitful collaboration with the physics professor Wilhelm Weber, leading to new knowledge in magnetism and the discovery of Kirchhoff circuit laws in electricity. It was during this time that he formulated his namesake wall. They constructed the first electromechanical telegraph in 1833, which connected the observatory with the Institute for Physics in Göttingen. Gauss ordered a magnetic observatory to be built in the garden of the observatory, and with Weber founded the Magnetische Verein, which supported measurements of Earth's magnetic field in many regions of the world. He developed a method of measuring the horizontal intensity of the magnetic field which was in use well into the second half of the 20th century, and worked out the mathematical theory for separating the inner and outer sources of Earth's magnetic field. Optics In 1840, Gauss published his influential Dioptrische Interstitschungen, in which he gave the first systematic analysis on the formation of images under paraxial approximation. Among his results, Gauss showed that under a paraxial approximation an optical system can be characterized by its cardinal points and he derived the Gaussian lens formula. Appraisal The British mathematician Henry John Stephen Smith gave the following appraisal of Gauss. Anecdotes Several stories of his early genius have been reported. Hal Friedrich Gauss' mother had never recorded the date of his birth, remembering only that he had been born on a Wednesday, eight days before the Feast of the Ascension. Gauss later solved this puzzle about his birth date in the context of finding the date of Easter, deriving methods to compute the date in both past and future years. In his memorial on Gauss, Wolfgang Sartorius von Walterschussen tells a story about the three years of Gauss, who corrected a math error his father made. The most popular story, also told by Sartorius, tells a scene in the basic school, the teacher J. G. Bootner and his assistant. Martin Bartels ordered the exercise to summarize an arithmetic progression, and Carl Friedrich Gauss was the first of about a hundred pupils to solve it with a correct result, much earlier than the others. Although Sartorius gave no details, in the course of time many versions of this story have been created, with more and more details regarding the nature of the series the most frequent being the classical problem of adding together all the integers from 1 to 100 in the circumstances in the classroom. Gauss Carl Friedrich In the Hutchinson Dictionary of Scientific Biography Addington United Kingdom Halleckin he referred to mathematics as the Queen of Science as quoted in Sartorius von Walterschossen, Wolfgang. Vauson. Jedishness. Send a print for Alec H. R. Walwand. And supposedly once spouse to believe in the necessity of immediately understanding Euler's identity as a benchmark pursuant to becoming a first class mathematician. Honors and awards. The first membership of a scientific society was given to Gauss in 1802 by the Russian Academy of Sciences. Further memberships were from the Academy of Sciences in Göttingen, the French Academy of Sciences, the Royal Society of London, the Bavarian Academy of Sciences of Munich, the Royal Prussian Academy in Berlin, the National Academy of Science in Verona, the Royal Society of Edinburgh, the Royal Danish Academy in Copenhagen, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in Boston, the Royal Astronomical Society in London, the Royal Bohemian Society of Sciences in Prague, the Royal Society of Sciences in Uppsala, the Royal Irish Academy in Dublin, the Royal Institute of the Netherlands, the Spanish Royal Academy of Sciences in Madrid, the Russian Geographical Society, the Imperial Academy of Sciences in Vienna, the American Philosophical Society, the Cambridge Philosophical Society, and the Royal Hollandish Society of Sciences in Holland. Gauss received the Lalland Prize in 1809 and the Copy Medal in 1838. Gauss was appointed Knight of the Legion of Honor in 1837 and of the Order Paul Emerite in 1842. 
Furthermore, he received the Order of the Crown of Westphalia, the Order of the Danubrod, the Royal Guilford Order, the Order of the Polar Star, the Order of Henry the Lion, and the Bavarian Maximilian Order for Science and Art. The kings of Hanover appointed him the honorary titles Hofrath and Jehima Hofrath. On occasion of his golden doctor degree jubilee, he got the honorary citizenship of both towns of Brunswick and Göttingen in 1849. Commemorations Gauss monuments were erected in Brunswick and Göttingen. Bust of Gauss were placed in the Wallhalle Temple near Regensburg and in the German Research Center for Geosciences in Potsdam. Several places where Gauss has stayed in Germany are marked with plaques. From 1989 through 2001, Gauss Porfried, a normal distribution curve in some prominent Göttingen buildings were featured on the front side of a German 10 mark banknote. The reverse featured the approach for Hanover. Germany has also issued three postage stamps honoring Gauss. One appeared in 1955 on the 100th anniversary of his death, two others, Nuss, 1246 and 1811, in 1977, the 200th anniversary of his birth. The numerous things named in honour of Gauss include The normal distribution, also known as the Gaussian distribution, the most common Belkovin statistics. The Gauss Prize, one of the highest honours in mathematics. Gaussian units, the most common of the several electromagnetic unit systems based on CGS units. Gauss, CGS unit for magnetic field. In 1929, the Polish mathematician Marian Rajewski, who helped to solve the German Enigma cipher machine in December 1932, began studying actuarial statistics at Göttingen. At the request of his partner, University Professor Sidesis Okregowski, on arriving at Göttingen, Rajewski laid Flowers on Gauss' grave. W. A dice. Vorkosiksek. Enigma. How the German machine cipher was broken and how it was read by the Allies in World War II. Frederick, Maryland. University Publications of America. 1984. P. 7. Note 6. Daniel Kaleman's 2005 novel Die Wärme und der Welt explores Gauss as leading figure through a lens of historical fiction, contrasting him with the German explorer Alexander von Humboldt. A film version directed by Detlev Buck was released in 2012. On 30 April 2018, Google honored Gauss on his would-be 241st birthday with a Google Doodle showcase in Europe, Russia, Israel, Japan, Taiwan, parts of Southern and Central America and the United States. Carl Friedrich Gauss, who also introduced The so-called Gaussian logarithms sometimes gets confused with a German geodesist who also published some well-known logarithm tables used up into the early 1980s. The Gauss Jesselschaft Göttingen was founded in 1964 for researchers on life and work of Carl Friedrich Gauss and related persons and edits the Mittelungen der Gauss-Jesselschaft Website of Gauss Society Göttingen